A little controversy off the field. First padded practice on the field. It's a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. Locked on Lions on the Locked on Podcast Network. We are into the month of August, a Monday, August 1st, and a Tuesday, August 2nd. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day here on Locked on Lions and finding us on Twitter, of course, at Derry Speaks or at Locked on Lions, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page. And, of course, on YouTube, you can watch us each and every day on the Locked on Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe, find us, watch us, like comment whatever you need to do right here on this very program and uh, we appreciate you watching if you are watching indeed on the youtube side we've been with you now we're entering into year seven of locked on lions and doing this podcast so if you want entertainment uh, entertainment when it comes to the lions the latest news opinions great guests we are your spot each and every day right here on Locked on Lions. Today, or we are proudly brought to you by, if I could speak today, Bet Online. Bet Online as you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it is where the game starts. Coming up on the show today, a little controversy off the field that occurred over the weekend in a story by Dave Burkett in the Free Press about former Lion Tyrell Crosby and how he was treated by the organization. And this being the new regime of Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. We'll get into that. Coming up momentarily. Also, today was day one in pads. Uh, fans were uh, flocking to see the Lions starting on Saturday with their practice. Had an off day yesterday and today. More fans out there, some season ticket holders and others. And they got to see their first padded practice. There was a group that absolutely dominated today in pads. We'll tell you about that coming up momentarily as well. Also, what's the latest on the defense? Who looked good today? A pickup for this organization as well. And an interesting comment that uh, the uh, defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn, had to say about who he really wants to see in pads. We'll get into all of that today right here on Locked on Lions. I'm going to be off next week. I'm figuring out the schedule, what we're doing, and to move some vacation around. I'm also battling COVID. Uh, last week, many of you, including our buddy Dr. Mark, who uh, listens uh, to us on the off of the Facebook page and always sends me comments, which we appreciate. But my boy, Dr. Mark, was like, if you have a sore throat and you just got back from out of town, you probably have COVID. And I did test positive uh, the other day. I'm fine, feeling okay, just a little bit tired and certainly dealing with a sore throat, cough, and, and cold. But um, So bear with me as the voice is continuing to kind of come back here. We'll have a full four shows this week uh, right here on Lockdown Lions. All right, let's get this out of the way. Uh, here at the beginning of the program as I uh, sip on some water here. But um, over the weekend, I think it was on Saturday, Dave Burkett, and Dave is one of the best in the business. He does a fantastic job covering the the organization for the free press. He's been around a long time. And uh, Dave came out with a story uh, in regards to former Lion Tyrell Crosby, who basically ripped Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and the organization to shreds for how they treated him uh, going back to last season, 2021, um, when he had uh, some various injuries. And uh, remember, the Lions also fired their trainer, Dave Granito, right at the start of preseason last year. It was weird timing. And so keep that in mind in the back of your mind as we talk about this story. Number one, if you read the story or it was behind a paywall, so you maybe you saw the highlights at Lions Wire or Pride of Detroit or somewhere else on the on the internet, know this. Every single player that has dealt with Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell so far, except one, has been very public about how well they've been treated. All right. Again, we don't know why Dave Granito, the trainer, was fired. Was it because of this Tyrell Crosby story? Tyrell Crosby basically says he was mistreated by the organization. He was mocked on his way out of town by Brad Holmes when he got rid of him. Uh, he was made fun of by Anthony Lynn. All of these things came out in this piece by Burkett. A couple of highlights include, all right, so 
Uh, they come back for uh, OTAs last May of 2021. And Crosby, right after they drafted Panay Sewell, there were rumors that Crosby was on the trading block. So, of course, he missed OTAs. Many people thought, oh, they're trying to trade him. Maybe there's a conversation going on, et cetera. Crosby claims that he was homesick. And because he had to quarantine during 2020, he wanted to be around his family, et cetera. Crosby claims in the story that everybody from Dan Campbell to Brad Holmes to offensive coordinator at the time, Anthony Lynn, uh, were really holding that decision against him for skipping OTAs because he was, quote unquote, homesick. Quote, at many camp, this is from the story at the Free Press, at many camp, Crosby said then Lions OC Anthony Lynn chided him during drills about missing OTAs for being afraid to compete. He said Campbell and GM Brad Holmes called him into the office last spring, pretty much saying how much I'm bad for the organization because I walk around like I don't care about my teammates, the city of Detroit, the staff members, when that's everything of those are the furthest from the truth, end quote. So it sounds like, again, it's Tyrell Crosby's side of the story. He's being chided by just about everybody in the organization. A uh, hamstring injury kept, uh, kept Crosby out of the practices when it came to training camp. He was out most of the preseason. According to Crosby, he complained about back pain. Those concerns were ignored and dismissed. And he was, according to Crosby, fined five grand for, for $5,000 for missing a weight room workout when he claims he was being treated for the back injury. Um, right around that time, again, Granito was fired as trainer. And... Uh, the Lions never really told us why Dave Granito was fired. Uh, weeks later, he did make his preseason debut in the last preseason game Crosby did. But then right after that, he was waived injured three days later. Detroit offered Crosby a four-week injury settlement, but he turned it down, sought uh, other medical options and opinions, and it was revealed with an MRI that he had a degenerative uh, degenerating back condition. He then had spine fusion surgery in December and might never play again. Crosby tells Burkett, quote, I would go all out of the I would go out of the way for anybody in that building and then to realize, oh, they actually just treat you like a genuine piece of meat and they don't. They act like they truly don't care. It's so disheartening. And I hear from the other guys around the league that it's most teams aren't that way. And so you start to understand, oh, there's definitely something that starts from the top down. It sucks. I wouldn't want to play for that organization just knowing what I know now and just how poorly they treat their players, end quote. Lions did not, uh, excuse me, did not comment for the Burkett Free Press story. Today, Dan Campbell did address this on the Stoney and Jansen program on 97.1 The Ticket. And uh, let's take a listen to that right now. Um, that the guys now have it. They know what you stand for. They know all the, uh, that's going on. There's an article that comes out talking about Terrell Crosby. Mm -hmm. How do you address that with your team so that it doesn't become an issue in the locker room and whispers don't start happening? Yeah, I, honestly, I don't. Um, you know, because my players know if they got an issue, they'll come up and talk to me. And they know that, man. My door's always open. You can come talk to me in practice. If you really believe there's something going on, we are big on that here, man. It's all about communicating. I've said it from day one. Our coaches say it from day one. If you've got a problem and something's on your mind, come talk to us, man. We're not going to get blasted. We're going to talk to you. We're going to talk to you like men. We'll tell you exactly what we were thinking, what we were doing. And I don't really feel like this is something I need to be proactive about, to be honest with you. Um, so I wish him the best of luck, and um, it's all good. i got 90 guys out here. i got to get better. All right, so there is Dan Campbell on 97 won the ticket. Uh, 90, talking this morning on the Stoney and Jansen program, um, live and direct from training camp today. Um, the Detroit Lions did something here they never do, rarely ever do. Um, and I want to get into that coming up next, and I promise we will get out of this thing. I don't want to spend that much time on it, but I want to tell you about our friends at Dave Level with me, folks. We've been in a situation at some point in all of our lives where we're a little tight on cash. Maybe you can only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank or you got to save up for a, 
a, a, a date or you got to get a gift for somebody's wedding, that's where Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief as if it's its helping hand. It's huge that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave. It's awesome. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to Dave.com. That's D-A-V-E, Dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Future you will thank you. Folks, the Detroit Lions, whenever, okay, going back 30 years, whenever there's been a big controversy, they avoid it. They sweep it under the rug. They never address things. That's never been what the Lions are about. You know, Matt Patricia's got issues. Jim Caldwell, Morningwig, Mariucci, <clears throat> Marinelli, Jim Schwartz controversies. Those were always squashed. Those were always put to bed. The, 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 the PR staff handled things. Dan Campbell went on the radio today and actually addressed it. John Jansen, give him credit. All right? I'm sure John had his Michigan hat on. But, but uh, uh, does that guy have maize? Does that guy wear maize and blue every day? Um, but no, seriously, Jansen, give him credit. He asked the question: Will you address the Tyrell Crosby thing? What, what are you doing about that? All right. Uh, uh, sometimes flagship stations don't ask the tough questions. They did today, and Campbell answered it and said, "Look, guys have issues. They got to come to us and talk to us. We're right here. The door's always open. That's not how we operate." We, 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 we operate a certain way, open door policy. You heard the cut. That was great. That was handled properly. I'm not saying this is going to, you know, equivalent, if that's even a word, equate to wins or losses or whatever on the field. All right. But Dan Campbell today addressing that matter on the radio and not saying no comment or we're not going to talk about that. And there might be some legal stuff going on with Tyrell Crosby. He may sue the team. Who knows? But the bottom line is Campbell's like, it's one guy. That's not how we operate around here. So I give the Lions and Dan Campbell credit. Do I know what happened? No. Why was Dave Granito fired? And it was never really talked about or addressed. Did it have something to do with Crosby? Did Granito do, Granito, Granito do something wrong? Who knows? There is something fishy there. But Campbell handling it today I thought was pretty cool and very well done. That's all I'll say on it. All right. Um, as far as on the field, today was the first padded practice for most teams around the league. They were allowed to get into pads today on August 1st. We are now into week two of training camp. Folks, there's a strength on this football team, and it showed today at camp. Everybody's been talking about it. I've gotten text messages today from the inside. The offensive line today destroyed the defensive line, destroyed it in pads. Um, up front, run game, pass game, didn't matter. And it started with Panay Sewell. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, the guy that could be that first time pro bowler that's never been a pro bowler before. And we do that list every year. And the number one on that list was Panay Sewell. He absolutely took both Aiden Hutchinson, mostly Aiden, and Charles Harris to the woodshed today. At one point today on a run play, he absolutely destroyed Jeffrey Okuda, nearly ended the kid's life. He was killing people out there today. And the offensive line wasn't just Sewell. Decker was great. Rag now handled Aleem, the dream, McNeil. Uh, guys were getting pushed around all day by that Lions offensive line. That's a great sign. All right, you got friends that are saying, yeah, maybe I'll bet the over on six and a half wins. What if they, can they get to seven? Can they get to eight? Could they possibly finish nine and eight? Well, if this offensive line stays healthy and the play calling has a good run pass mix and a balance and DeAndre Swift is there and healthy and Goff has time to throw, um, they could be really good. Remember last year, the amount of injuries that this offensive line had, yet for the most part, they kept the quarterbacks upright you know there were get you you played you started last year without decker you had ragno out for most of the year 
Uh, Vitae got hurt in a few games. You had Tommy Kramer mixing in, Evan Brown. Matt Nelson had to play a ton last year, uh, opposite of Sewell when Decker was out. And yet they did all right. And uh, this team is very well coached. Hank Fraley is awesome as an offensive line coach. And I think eventually could, could end up being a head coach in this league. But they've got some real studs up there, and it showed today. Remember on Saturday, you might have read about this, Aiden Hutchinson schooled Panay Sewell on a few plays, got around him, got to the quarterback, and you're like, wow, number two overall pick, our guy from Divine Child in Michigan, he, he's showing up. Today, the tables turned in pads. Not that Aiden was bad, it was just that Sewell was that good. And if you can have a couple of bookend tackles that are going to be this solid, and Ragnow up front, who's a pro bowler, and Jonah Jackson, who got accolades last year as a pro bowler, when was the last time the Lions had a mauling offensive line like this? And if they're able to just run the football and maul people with Swift and Reynolds and Jamal Williams and possibly a new running back that they signed today, we'll tell you about, that's going to open up things down the field for Hawkinson and, and, and Jamison Williams and Chark. Well, maybe this offense will be really good. And maybe they won't need the defense to be great, just, just average enough. Uh, to get it uh, to get it done but today was a huge day for the offensive line I mentioned Decker uh, 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 pushing Charles Harris around today and again Panay Sewell did a fantastic job uh, also today uh, wide receivers did very well Josh Reynolds who of course is now being nicknamed the praying mantis by Dan Campbell and a freaking serpent Josh Reynolds continues to make a really good plays today and on a couple couple of plays, Okuda had good coverage on him, and he made good catches. Uh, Khalil Pimpleton continues to show up. Qu- Quintez Cephas, excuse me, uh, Cephas has been really good. So without Jamison Williams, you worry. Outside of Amon Ra and Chark, who's going to step up? Campbell loves Josh Reynolds. And maybe just maybe the Lions found something here. And that remember, when, when Goff and Reynolds were in L.A. together, they were pretty decent. Maybe they found something here with with Reynolds and with his size and speed. Um, because a year ago, that receiving core outside of Amon Ross St. Brown was, uh, you know, very, very mediocre. So now it appears they're going to give Goff some help. And the receivers continue to uh, show out and do a very good job. Uh, two more things coming up next that I want to get into. One is something Aaron Glenn had to say. And a roster move today by the Lions. We'll tell you about that. Uh, coming up next, first, though, we always like to talk about our friends at BetOnline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games, Bet Online. Find reviews and news of every league, Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, and even golf. If you wanted to bet this past weekend on flipping SummerSlam, you could have done it at betonline.net. They continue to be the top online source for all your sports wagering information. Baseball games this week, Tigers are playing. Uh, You want to bet against them as they continue to lose? Get the lines, get the spreads, the odds, the over-unders at BetOnline. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Heck, we got Thursday Thursday night, we have the Hall of Fame game, I think. You go to BetOnline, get all the information you need. BetOnline, where? The game starts. All right, quick note today. uh, Corey Booker, a wide receiver, has decided to, uh, he's released, injured, retired. And so the team has picked up former Chargers running back and former legend at Northwestern. The little guy, Justin Jackson, has been signed by the Lions today. I like this pickup. I remember Justin Jackson in the Big Ten with the Wildcats. uh, When given an opportunity with the Chargers, Performed pretty well. He's a small guy. And just keep an eye on this pickup because Justin Jackson can play special teams, can return, good hands out of the backfield. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, this is a little bit of a a statement being made to Jamar Jefferson. Jamar Jefferson is not at a good camp so far from all indications, has struggled a bit coming out of the gate. Everybody's raving about Swift. Certainly Jamal Williams will be there. And, of course, Craig Reynolds. Come on, Craig. Craig Reynolds has been good and was real good last year when Swift and Williams were hurt. Uh, But Jamar Jefferson, a seventh-round pick last season of Brad Holmes, has not gotten off to a great start. 
So the Lions go out and find some depth and pick up Justin Jackson, who was a let go by the Chargers. So keep an eye on that. That's a good pickup and a guy that will push Jefferson. And we'll see if Justin Jackson has an opportunity to make the team. But he was very good in college and given opportunities with the Chargers uh, when guys were out. Uh, Austin Eckler and others, uh, he stepped up and, uh, and, you know, carried the football, averaged about five yards of carry uh, at one point. So Justin Jackson, I like that pickup by Brad Holmes. Also today, what was interesting was Aaron Glenn spoke to the media after Dan Campbell this morning before practice started. And he was asked who he wants to see, you know, in pads today and what guys he's really taking a look at. And Glenn said, Malcolm Rodriguez and Justin Houston. Um, that's telling. The Lions, I don't think, I think the Lions know Elliot and Walker on the back end. Glenn making the comment today about how Will Harris and, and Okuda are battling right now for the spot opposite of Oruarie. I really have a hard time thinking Jeffrey Okuda is not going to win that and be the guy, but they seem to like Will Harris now as a cornerback. But up front with a D-line, they're obviously taking a look at depth with Romeo Quara and Josh Pascal hurt, but linebacker's wide open, wide open. Chris Board is out there. There's others, certainly Anzalone. But for Aaron Glenn to say, look, I want to see what Malcolm Rodriguez and James Houston do. These mid to late round you know, draftees that are rookies this year that teams bypassed, you know, are going to get an opportunity here. So keep an eye. And I, I like, I love the James Houston draft. I think he's, uh, you know, versatile, can rush the edge, can play anywhere. Not that I know anything about Jackson state and I watched him play, but watching a film and YouTube, I liked it. I know Malcolm Rodriguez is the chic, sexy pick. Oh, the underrated guy. He was a captain at Oklahoma State, and he was the, the bowl game MVP. I think he's a little bit undersized. I think James Houston has a chance to help this season. So interesting to hear Aaron Glenn make that comment today. All right, that'll do it for a Monday edition of Locked on Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen. Thanks for watching on YouTube. We are back again tomorrow.